Hi guys, today I'm going to be showing you the basics of Blender. This is going to be a multiple part series, so remember to subscribe with post notifications so you can see when I upload my next video for it. This video is going to be about movement, the tools and the UI, and the next video will be about texturing. But yeah, anyways, let's get on with the video. So if we open up a new project, this is what you'll see. And movement in Blender is actually very easy. It's just the middle mouse button and you can then move around. And if you hold shift and then hold the middle mouse button and drag your mouse around, you can actually move around. And then you can use these two to just move around the place. You can also go to view, navigation, walk navigation and fly around like this. So now you know how to move around, we can learn the simple tools. So if we just delete this, with X and as you can see here now you can see what I'm doing so to add stuff in shift a and then it will bring this menu up and you have everything here I might have some more things if I go to mesh because I've added add-ons into it but if we just add a cube you see we've got a cube here so to move things around you click G and you can see it moves and to lock things on you can click Z this up x to go this way and y to go this way click middle mouse and it will lock onto that way if you go sideways it will look that way and this way it will look that way it's just a, like a quick way of doing it let's say we want to scale this down we can click s and that you can see that scales and then again x for going this way and i find this isn't that good going that so to make it smaller you would go sideways it's just an easier way because going like this you can see it like goes a bit weird like that but yeah, S, and then you click X, Y, Z to go the different ways. So let's say I scale this a bit. There is extruding, and this is one of the best things ever for modeling. Because if you click tab, this then goes into edit mode up here. And as you can see first, you can only you can't do anything with the cube. There's only one cube. But if you go into edit mode, you can see all the faces. And actually, talking about faces, there's three modes up here. Vertices, edges, and faces. So, vertices are these little dots here. Edges are the lines here, as you can see. And then faces are faces, the face of the object. So, to do that, it's one, two, and three. As you can see here, one, two, three. So, like I was saying about extruding, you click E, and it will go out here. And you can just click. And as you can see, you can do that on all these there is only one thing, never extrude out this way. And if you do want to change the extrude, you can see it only extrudes up. But like I said, you can either use X, Y, Z again. So I've just done that in the wrong order, but it's fine. You know what I'm on about. And also you can use middle mouse. This works for most things. So if we add this back in, the next thing I will show is inset. And if you select a face and click I, you can see it goes in. And this is another really good modeling thing because if you just extrude up after doing that, you can see you can create very easy shapes. Like I've just created this tower. Also, like any other software, Control Z is undo. And then Control Shift Z is redo. And you can see how much I use tab. You can click up here in the menu, but it's just so much time that you waste doing that. And you can just quickly do this and select different things and like always x is delete so again if i add a cube back in i'm going to say about beveling this is also another amazing thing so control b and there we go bevel you can also bevel like that and scroll up and you can see how much more smooth that looks or you can either click two get the corner and bevel just one side so let's say i'm going to scroll this back down so we have that so i can make stuff like this so now there are loop cuts. This is another amazing thing. It's Control R, and you see if you click, click again. Now this is an extra cut in the cube. We can also grab this and extrude it out, and you can see that's so good. You can also Control R, and then you can add more if you scroll up and scroll down to get rid of them. Another good extruding thing is let's say you want to make a border for a house. I don't know what, uh, a skirting board. I'll put an image up now. Let's say you want a skirting board around the house, or around the bottom of the house, the base. So you've just made the loop cut, and you can select these. Hold shift, by the way, to select more than one thing. Um, and then if you alt E, this menu comes up. So extrude faces is the one that we've done before. That's just E. But alt E, and if you do 
extrude faces along normals, you can see that this goes out on either side. And you see we've got an easy skirting board. So now I'm going to be talking about UI. And you see there's so much stuff around. We've got modeling, sculpting, UV, editor, texture paint. We don't even need to use these. If we just go back to layout, we can add all the little windows in here. So let's say we want to drag this up. And this is our timeline. And when we've got an animation, this is where we can add keyframes in and all that kind of stuff. If you go over to here, these are all the different menus. So the shade editor, this is where you would add textures in. And we haven't got anything yet, so I'll quickly add a cube in. And then you click new texture here. And this also works here in shaded editor. So let's say we click new. This is now our material for this object. I will do a whole other texture video. And this will go in all the depth of it. And also adding more than one texture to an object very easily. But if we go up here again and we select the color, you can see it changes. You can also make it, as you can see here, it's a neon, it's glowing, so you can do anything. But anyway, like I was saying, we've got all these here, and you can actually add more than one thing here. So, another thing you use a lot is UV editing, that will also be talked about in the texturing video. Anyway, if we go over here, and you see this little thing pops up, if you drag it across, you see we've got this, and we can now change this to example, UV editor. And then here, we can have something else. But when you're starting out, you not need to do this. Because I remember watching tutorials of loads of screens. People had loads of different windows. And I didn't know what it meant. But you'll understand when you get to know all of the different tools. We've also got this up here. This is one of the most important things. And this is where you can see wireframe. You don't really use this a lot. It's more... To see through things if you need to select things through other things. That will be talked about in later videos. We've got solid. This is good for just if you're modelling stuff. And it's really easy to see different models. And all different objects in the scene. And it also doesn't lag your PC. We've then got the texture mode. And this is when you've got textures. And you want to see what it looks like. And then we've got the shader mode. And this is using the render engine and it's actually putting shadows and reflections onto your scene i didn't explain that very well the, i might make another video on render engines and stuff completely but pretty much quickly that's as you can see viewport shading so it's a shading area and that then goes on to the different rendering options so the, the two that you're going to be really be using are ev and cycles most of the time you're going to want to use cycles pretty much 70 percent of the time cycles has ray tracing and it's just a lot better i'll put two images now one ev and one cycles but this does not mean ev is bad it's just used differently and another upside to ev it renders instantly literally a click and it renders cycles can take minutes to render depending on what's in the scene i will make a whole different video about this because there are a lot of settings for ev and then cycles and there are also plugins to make it quicker or well, not quicker but you can turn samples down and resolution down as well but when we go into cycles or ev we've got samples and resolution you're know about because i don't need i won't need to go over that you you already know about resolution but resolution is the aspect ratio it's just what your screen resolution is going to be and you can turn that down if you want quicker render times but all just you want to turn this to gpu if you're using cycles and i would say if you're doing test renders set this to about 100 or 200 denoising that'd be another thing again that i'll do in the longer render engine video but this pretty much guesses where noise is going to be and fills it in it can look great if you have higher samples but it can make it look moldy if it has low samples and that's called artifacting we've also got things like motion blur that's very important depending on the scene again most of the time we're going to want to have that on but that's pretty much it for the render engine part 